395 together, 395, I have a song that Jesus gave me, it was sent from heaven above, let's all stand together as we sing, 395, in my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. I have a song And uh, just a little bit. I think we're only supposed to get like an inch, so that won't be anything. And uh, we'll be able to be back at church tonight. Amen. That sounds pretty good. I feel like you believe that. Amen. And uh, we look forward to a great day today. And uh, thanks for being in church this morning. Let's open with prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be here together this morning. Thank you for each one that's made their way to church today. Thank you for safety as we traveled in and uh, we gather together now, Lord, and we ask you to meet with us. You promise when we gather together that there you'll be in the midst, and we need you this morning, God. We need you to speak to our hearts, and Lord, do a work in each of us that you know needs to be done. The best we know, we yield ourselves to you here at the beginning of the service. May your will be done in each one of our lives, and may you accomplish what you would like to accomplish in our service today. May Christ be exalted. May we lift him up. And as we lift them up, may you draw all of us closer to him. It's in Christ's name I ask it. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will I who made the stars and sky, I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I
I will break their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I Would you turn with me to number 311, 311, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child, and forever I am. 311, let's sing that first together. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child, and forever I am. Redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb, redeem, redeem, his child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence will be the continually dwell. I'm redeemed. Listen carefully now. We have a few announcements for you. Our regular schedule uh, today, 5.30, we have our Christian growth class. We meet down in the conference room, which is right across from our nursery. And uh, tonight's lesson will be on prayer. And uh, if there's one, if there's one area that most Christians talk more about than practice, it would be prayer. Uh, I've, I've, I've never had anybody come to me and say, Pastor, I, I got a problem. I just pray too much. 
Uh, it just doesn't doesn't happen. I have m multitudes of people come to say, I, I wish I had a better prayer life. I wish I prayed more than what I did. And so we'll learn about prayer this evening uh, during the 530 Christian growth class. Then 630, we'll be back here in the auditorium for the evening service. And we invite you back for that uh, Sunday night. Lord willing, tonight I'm going to talk to you about spiritual gifts. Uh, when you get saved and you receive Christ as your Savior, God gives you gifts, and uh, at least one, and uh, many times multiple gifts. And you ought to know what your spiritual gift is and how you ought to use it uh, for the Lord in the church. And so uh, I'll talk about your gift tonight. So uh, be present. I think you'll get help from that this evening. All right. Then a uh, re reminder, Wednesday night, John and Emily Combest will be with us. And uh, they're, most of you know, Emily Moreland Combest. And uh, they're going to the Congo and ultimately to Uganda. And uh, they're going to be presenting uh, their workforce on Wednesday night. And you'll be delighted uh, to hear them Wednesday evening. And then remember Monday, January 18th is Ladies Night Out. There's a sign-up sheet for that downstairs. And uh, ladies always have a great time. That's 6.30. And I think it... Uh, I think it has something to do with getting organized, all right? So uh, it, uh, not that any of you need that, but in case you might know somebody who does, um, it can help you out if you come on Monday evening. So sign up for that for your ladies' night out. Uh, that's on the 18th. Uh, on the 19th, we have Grove City School of the Bible beginning, and uh, that'll be at 7 p.m on Tuesday evening, all right, those of you who have signed up for that course, and if you uh, have not signed up and you'd be interested in that, uh, then you can see me after the service, and I'll get you that information, all right, and then a reminder, on January 23rd will be the men's breakfast, the sign-up sheet is down there for that, that's at 8.15 on Saturday morning, January the 23rd, and also, um, we have a teen activity on January 23rd. Uh, teens are going to have laser tag and pizza. Sounds good. And uh, it's from 3 to 6 p.m. on Saturday, January 23rd. It's $15 for the laser tag and the pizza. And so uh, if you have any questions, you see Andy or Nikki for that. But that'll be January 23rd for your teen activity. Then remember, February will be I Love My Church Month. And one of the things we're going to be doing in February, we're going to be uh, collecting uh, quarters. We're going to have some uh, folders for you starting next week, but I want you to be thinking about getting your quarters set aside. Some of you have change you throw into a, uh, a container of some kind, uh, but save your quarters. We'll get you the folders, and uh, the first uh, Sunday of February, I think, is I Love Mission Sunday, and we're going to be, uh, when is it? Oh, I love my Bible Sunday. That's when we're collecting for the Bibles. We're going to use it to buy Bibles uh, for people, so uh, we'll uh, we just want you to be uh, have a heads up on that, and uh, you got a few weeks to start setting that aside, and uh, we will have those folders for you by next Sunday, okay? All right, that's what I have now. We, we will take a special offering uh, at the end of the service today uh, after the regular offering, and it'll be for the Wharton family. Uh, uh, David and Marlene Wharton uh, had their home burned to the ground Wednesday morning. Uh, they... Uh, they and I think it was her parents and they're all 10 children got out safely uh, but the house is a complete loss and uh, so they the, the outpouring has been tremendous and my right brother Jason they just been it's just been incredible by Christian folks who have come to help them and so uh, really uh, I think that that what they're looking what they really need is cash and uh, to be able to do some things, maybe uh, gas cards, things like that. But we're just going to take an offering and give them, uh, give them cash. If you make a check out, you can make it out to Bible Baptist Church, and then we'll give them a check that they'll be able to cash and uh, give cash to this family to help with whatever is needed yet that uh, they can take care of. All right. Is there any update on that, Brother Jason? Anything you want to add to that? Yeah. Is there, uh, I mean, we're going to give the offering. Is that the best way to go? Okay. Sure. Still have, aren't sure what direction they're going to go yet. Okay. And just pray for the family. Pray for wisdom that they know where, what, what the, what's the Lord's purpose behind all this and what direction the Lord wants them to go. Okay. And uh, we appreciate you doing that. All right. So, Will, if you... If you designate something in the offering, that's fine. But we will, after our regular offering, at the end of the service today, we'll, we'll pass the plates just for the Wharton offering. Okay, just so you know, there'll be a separate offering just for that at the end of our service this morning. Well, let's take a minute.
we'll welcome anybody who's visiting this morning. We're always glad when folks visit, especially on a winter morning. And uh, anybody here today for the very first time? And put your hand up in the air. Dwayne's here today for the first time. He's been at RU, and uh, good to see Dwayne here this morning. Good to have you today, my friend. Glad he's here. And uh, anyone else this morning? All right. Dwayne, if you'll take just a minute and fill the card out, we appreciate you doing that. And a uh, little bit we have the offering, just drop that in the plate. And keep the pen as our gift to you for coming, all right? Glad you're here today. Let's give this young man a warm welcome, shall we? Forty three four zero. Oh, what a savior that he died for me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, verily, verily, message ever new. Three four zero. Let's sing that first together. Oh, what a savior that he died for me. From condemnation he hath made me free. He that liveth on the sun and he hath everlasting life. Let's go to 223, 
two, two, three. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord. Let's all stand together one more time as we sing. Two, two, three. On that first together. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice. And it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Hey! 
So you don't have something with you this morning, you want to bring it tonight, that's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we have a morning and evening, and then we'll uh, send it on their way after our service tonight. Okay? All right. Let's pray for the offering this morning. Brother Taylor, lead us in our prayer, if you would, please. Okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this great day that you've made, Lord. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for this building, Lord, a place to meet and worship. Lord, may everything is said and done be pleasing to you. Help us as we give this offering today, Lord, and remember not to rob you of the tithes. May you be pleased with the offerings as well. Multiply it as only you can, Lord. Seem fit. Spend it as, as wisely as it can be done, Lord, for any those that's lost to you. Be with the pastor this morning as he opens up the word and help us to, to eagerly listen to the word, Lord, as if we were searching for treasure. And Lord, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know that song she played? Wow, look at that. Not very many. Put your hands up again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, not even half. It's called Living for Jesus, a life that is true. It's a great song. Great song. We'll have to add that one into our congregational singing so you can learn that. Luke chapter 6 for our scripture reading. Luke chapter 6 for our scripture reading this morning. Three verses we're going to read this morning. We'll, I'll we'll begin together on verse number 43 of Luke chapter 6. Then I'll read verse 44 and we'll end together reading verse number 45. Luke chapter 6. 43 together. I'll read 44 together on 45. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. Let's begin together on verse 43, Luke chapter 6. Ready? For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. 
a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing now to the reading of these scriptures here this morning. Thank you, Lord, already for what we've heard and the wonderful music today and the message and the songs that have been sung. And Father, we're asking you to continue to prepare our hearts so we'll be ready to receive the truth that you have for us from your word today. I thank you for the Bible. Thank you, God, for preserving your word for us, that we have copies of it in our hand this morning. And Lord, I pray that you use the special now to continue to put us in tune with thee, that we're ready to hear and eager to hear what the Spirit would say to his church this morning. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. He left the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny was the lonely hill to Golgotha, there to lay down his life for me. Father in heaven, we bow before you now this morning as we <clears throat> come to the preaching of your word. I want to thank you today again for the Bible and for allowing us to have copies in our hands this morning. Lord, I don't believe that these are the words of men or the words of a man. I believe it is in truth the word of God. Lord, as we spoke in Sunday school, it's the foolishness of preaching that saves them that believe. And I pray that once again you use the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe that are in this room this morning. And Father, I pray that you'd help me as I bring this message that you have laid on my heart, help the people as they listen today. And I pray that your will would be accomplished here in our midst today, not only for us here in this room, but those with whom we'll come in contact with. Lord, we pray for our country this morning, that you would turn America back to God, that our heart would once again look to you, Lord, help us, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about it's a matter of the heart. 
This is not the original message I had planned to uh, bring this morning, but uh, around Thursday or Friday, the Lord changed the message, and um, I looked with horror, I believe it was Friday, when the attempted murder of the Philadelphia police officer, the fellow walked right up to his marked car as he sat there and opened fire on the police officer. I think he had 11 different shots and hit the officer three times and the officer still was able to apprehend him and call for help. Of course, we know a few weeks ago uh, or so, the massacre out in San Bernardino in Southern California. And recently, we know the president came out and held a town hall and tried to, with executive order, and has, with executive order, tried to uh, pass even stricter background checks for those who would want to bear arms. Yet it's interesting, on the same day that he held his news conference to announce what he was doing, 12 people were murdered in Chicago that nobody knows about, nobody hears about. Just about as many as were murdered out in San Bernardino. But it goes unnoticed and unchecked. Not an unusual occurrence, by the way, in the city of Chicago. So the president had decided through executive order to try to, to, try to place more laws on the books. And, and the problem isn't more laws on the books. Trying to restrict the ability of law-abiding citizens to bear firearms. And I believe, you know, he of those of his persuasion and others believe that stricter laws are the answer. They believe that less guns are the answer. They believe that more mental health counseling is the answer. They believe tougher background checks are the answer. But I would submit to you this morning on the authority of the Word of God that none of those are the answer. Uh, the, 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 the more laws are not the answer. Uh, by the way, more guns aren't the answer. And, and more background checks is not the answer. More counseling is not the answer. I'll tell you what I believe the answer is based on the Word of God. And that is a new heart is the answer. The problem lies in the heart of mankind. That's where the issue is. America has left God. And therefore, America does not know how to be good. We cannot be good apart from God. When you remove God, you remove good. You can't have one without the other. So the problem is not guns. And the problem is not violence. The problem is not immorality. The problem is not race. The problem is not political. The problem, number one, is the problem of the heart. The problem is the heart of man. The Bible says man is wicked and his heart is wicked. The heart of man is is, is de deceitful above all things, the Bible says, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I know sometimes we, we look at somebody and in a, in a well-intentioned phrase, we say, well, I think they got a good heart. But the truth of the matter is, nobody has a good heart. All of our hearts are wicked and all of the hearts are deceitful and you can't follow your heart. The world likes to tell you that advice, just follow your heart. No, the heart can deceive you. The heart can lead you where you don't need to go. Jesus said, look over at Matthew chapter 15. Would you turn there please? You're in Luke chapter 6. Look at Matthew 15. Matthew 15, notice with me if you will, verse number 19. Jesus says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Jesus said, here's what defiles the man. It's the evil thoughts, it's the murders, it's the adulteries, it's fornication, it's thefts, it's false witness, it's blasphemies, and they defile the man. And where do they come from, my friend? They come from the heart of man. And listen, that's not just in that guy's heart. That's in my heart too. And that's in your heart also. It is, uh, there's no exceptions to that rule. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Notice another passage in the passage we read this morning, if your finger's still there in Luke 
chapter 6 where Jesus spoke again and He said that, that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So man is corrupt because the heart of man is corrupt. Man is wicked because the heart of man is wicked. Man is immoral because the heart of man is immoral. Man murders because the heart of man is murder. The answer to the gun problem is a new heart. The answer to the violence problem is a new heart. The answer to the race problem is a new heart. The answer is a new heart. Let me give you statement number two. The only one who can change the heart is God. The only one who can change your heart is God. No amount of legislation is going to change your heart. No amount of laws being passed is going to change the heart of man. God changes. And by the way, God is in the heart changing business. And some of you could testify to that because He changed your heart. And, and when God changes, you know, when God changes people, he changes them from the inside out. He does it from the inside out. We preach that to the men in the RU program. That, that as God changes your behavior and He changes you into to, to think differently and act differently, He does it from the inside out, not from the outside in. You recall Saul of Tarsus, who was an enemy to the church of God and an enemy to Christians. In Acts chapter 9, he met Christ on the road to Damascus and he was gloriously saved on the road to Damascus and received Christ as his Savior. And his heart was changed. And he was a completely different person. Now, listen, the, the, the Christ that he once sought to destroy and the Christ that he sought to tear down, now he preaches Christ. He preaches that He's the Savior of the world. The Christians that he once sought to arrest and, and to put into prison and even to sentence them to death, now are the believers that he longs to be with and he wants to fellowship with and he wants to be a part of and he wants to be included with. What happened? God changed his heart. That's what happened. And now, he, he's a different man. The heart is changed. I thought of Zacchaeus, the tax collector, who, as most tax collectors of his day, would get more than what was required from people. And they were allowed to do that. That was not, uh, uh, it, was, it wasn't right morally, but it was not illegal as far as the Romans were concerned. As long as they got what was coming to them, they didn't care how much extra you got for yourself. And so tax collectors were very wealthy individuals, because they would get not only what you owed to Rome for taxes, but they'd get enough for themselves as well. And Zacchaeus was one of those people. And of course, he, I think through the influence of Matthew and Matthew leaving being a tax collector to follow Jesus Christ. And remember, Matthew had a great supper and he invited a lot of tax collectors to come. It's very possible Zacchaeus was in that crowd that heard Jesus uh, at Matthew's farewell dinner, so to speak. Uh, for all the people at the office, you know. And it might have been Zacchaeus there who, who finally uh, maybe heard about Jesus or maybe he heard from some of the other tax collectors who were there. And maybe he wasn't there, but he heard about it because when Jesus was ready to come through Jericho, Zacchaeus said, I need to see him close up. I need to see this Jesus, who he is. And he climbed up in the sycamore tree, you know the song uh, that you sang in Sunday school. It's going through your head right now. And, uh, and, and he wanted to see who Jesus was, and Jesus stopped, and he said, you come down here, I'm, going to, I'm coming to your house today. And the Bible says he came down and he received him joyfully. He received him joyfully. And that day, Zacchaeus received Christ as his Savior. And guess what? He changed his heart. He got a heart change. You know how we know? He said, hey, here's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go around to everybody I wronged, and I'm going to store them fourfold. I'm going to store them four times the amount that I took from them. And uh, boy, that's really getting saved, isn't it? And uh, he, he decided, I'm going to make it right. From a cheat and a fraud and a dishonest person to somebody who wants to give back not only what he wronged, but four times what he wronged people. That's a change of heart. The Bible says in Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10, as with the heart that man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible talks about in Acts chapter 8 when Philip is witnessing to the Ethiopian eunuch. And the eunuch is, he, by the way, he opens the Bible. To, the eunuch's been reading in Isaiah 53 and uh, about the sufferings of, of Christ. And, 
The eunuch says, ask Philip, who's this guy talking about? Who is this man? And the Bible says, Philip opened that scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And so he says, they go on and there's some water here. And the eunuch says, hey, here's some water. What hinders me from being baptized? In fact, look there, will you? Let's go to Acts chapter 8. I want you to see this. Acts chapter 8, you're in Luke, just go to your right, you'll find John, go to your right, you'll find Acts, and look at Acts chapter 8, will you? Acts 8. Verse 35 is where it says that Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, there came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. He said, hey, I, 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 I he explained to him who Jesus was and that Christ died for his sins and he died for him on the cross and that he was buried and he was our sacrifice and he paid the sin debt for us. And the eunuch said, man, if he died for me, how can I trust him? Can I, can I follow him? Can I be baptized? And Philip said, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't get baptized before you believe in Jesus. You get baptized after you believe in Jesus. Do you believe in him with all your heart? He said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, that's from a Jewish fellow, a Jewish proselyte who had been in Jerusalem. And when the Jew says, I believe Christ is the Son of God, he's saying, I believe Christ is the Messiah. And uh, he's the Savior. And, and so now that you believe with all your heart, salvation. Hey, Philip didn't just say, hey, pray this prayer with me. Be careful. Nothing wrong with praying a prayer, but you better believe it in your heart or we'll scrape the prayer off the ceiling later. Otherwise, it means nothing. How many times it, listen, salvation is a heart matter. And, and God changes your heart when you get saved. And, and He changed that eunuch's heart that day. And He said, here's water, let me get baptized. By the way, one of the ways you know that someone's had the heart change is they want to obey God. And the first act of obedience to God after salvation is baptism. It's just a matter of being obedient to the Lord. And, and saying, if that's the next step God wants me to do, then that's what I want to do. I want to follow the Lord in baptism. I want to show everyone else that I believe Christ died, He was buried, and He rose again for me. And I'm not ashamed that I, He is my Savior. And so He took Him right there and baptized Him. By the way, that, that, that passage shows not only that baptism always follows salvation, but it also shows that, that baptism is by immersion. Uh, I'm sure he probably would have had a, a, a little bit of water in that chariot for his long journey. And if baptism was by pouring some water on his head, he could have just said, give me that cup of water and I'll pour it on your head, you're baptized. Uh, but he didn't do that. He had to have a bunch of water and they both went down into the water and he baptized him. Because baptism pictures the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it pictures it here with Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And so... You believe with all your heart. Listen to me. What you believe in your heart is how you will live your life. Did you hear me? What you believe in your heart is how you live your life. When you leave the heart alone, then that heart that is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked is, is, is going to take you down the road of murder and immorality and theft and covetousness, and violence. Man left to himself, that's where man will go. Man will not get better, man will get worse. We have, those of you who have been alive long enough, and I've been alive long enough now to know that they have thrown education and money at America's problems for 50 years since I've been alive. And I'm sure they did it before I was alive. And that doesn't work, my friend. All we get is educated sinners. The change has to come from the heart. And that change, the change comes when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. It changes your heart. Number three, let me say this. When the heart changes, your life changes. When the heart changes, your life changes. The Bible says in Proverbs, out of the heart are the issues of life. The issues are the, the circumstances, the events of life. They come from our heart. We sing, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought. How'd that happen? Since 
Jesus came into my heart. And by the way, uh, salvation isn't me giving my heart to Jesus. Salvation isn't me giving God anything. Salvation is me receiving Christ as my Savior. It's Him giving to me, not me giving Him. I don't have anything to give to Him. I can't give God anything. I'm a, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, and Jesus is a Savior I needed. And I received Him as my Savior. And, and He, by faith, dwells in our heart, according to the book of Colossians, and, and He comes into your heart. And you know what happens? A change in your life takes place when Christ comes into your heart. It happens. That's why Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, all your soul. And so the reason, listen, listen carefully this morning, the reason you don't read your Bible is because you've never had a change of heart. The reason you don't have a desire to pray and to communicate with God is because your heart's never been changed. The reason you get bored at church and you're asleep right now with your eyes closed is because your heart's never been changed. The reason you're so awake on Saturday night and so asleep on Sunday morning is your heart's never been changed. The reason that you like American Idol and The Voice and Ellen is because your heart's never been changed. Let me tell you, I've mentioned Tony Fustashi here before. Tony was from New Jersey. New Jersey. And he tells his testimony of how his brother led him to Christ. His brother, brother got born again. And Tony was Catholic, but marginal Catholic. Uh, Catholic in name only, you know, didn't go at all. And uh, was married, living there, and his brother would call him on the phone and talk to him, and his brother would be witnessing to him. He said, one day on a Saturday, and he said, I remember he was talking to me, and, and he witnessed to me, and he said, and... I prayed with him on the telephone and asked Christ to be my Savior. He said, I didn't know anything else about it. I just knew he'd been born again. And he kept talking to me about being born again. And I knew I need to get born again. So I prayed and I asked Christ to be my Savior. He said, that day we were painting our house. And we had a bunch of people over to help paint. Kind of a painting party. And then when we got done at night, we had pizza and things to eat. He said, and we sat down and we turned on Saturday Night Live. It's what we watched every week. He said, and we sat there and there's a group of 10 or 12 up there in the room, he said, and people would laugh at the jokes. He said, and he said, and I was watching and he said, and guess what? All of a sudden, that stuff wasn't funny to me anymore. He said, all of a sudden, I just didn't see the humor. They all looked at me and said, man, what's wrong with you? And he told me, he said, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I don't know if I was getting sick or what was going on, but he said, I just didn't enjoy it anymore. And finally, I just told him, hey, I'm going to bed. And he went to bed. He said, looking back on it now, he said, I know what happened to me now. Christ came into my heart, and He changed my heart. And when He changed my heart, He changed my desires. And that stuff that used to be funny, that wasn't funny to me anymore. Hey, I got news for you, my friend. When Christ saves you, He changes your heart. And if you have no heart for the things of God and no desire for the things of God and no desire for the Word of God and no desire to do anything for God with your life and you just come to church to be in church and here's your pose most of the time in church. Or, or you get your phone out and, and you're doing that all through church. Hey, my friend, I, I'm not trying to give you a false security that you're going to happen. I'm not going to do that. Because based on the Word of God, you've not had a change of heart. There ought to be a desire in your heart to want to know something about God and a desire to do something with your life for God. The problem in America is we have a lot of people who know something about God. Hey, Jesus said that broad is the way and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many there be that go in there at. And he said, there's straights the way, narrows the way, and straight is the gate that leads unto life, and few there be that find it. So hey, how many people are going to heaven? Few. Hey, preacher, how many folks are on the road to hell? Many. That tells me something. When 80% of Americans say that they're born again, somebody doesn't have it right. That means there are a lot of people who think they're going there who aren't going to go there. 
If we have more mega churches in America than ever before, that's churches that run over 2,000 people on a Sunday. And we have now, there was a day when there were only a handful of those in America, and now I think there's over 100 or 200 of those in America. You say, man, we got all these people going to church. Hey, how come we're not seeing an impact in our country? Because our heart isn't changed. We've got religion, but we don't have salvation. We've got, we've got people conforming to something, but we don't have salvation. We don't have regeneration. The problem is our heart. We need our heart right with God. God changed Tony Frasashi's heart. When He changes your heart, He changes your desires. He changes you. How do you remember or know, uh, you may not remember it, but you may remember reading about it, something called Watergate. Compared to what goes on today, it was a Sunday school picnic, but uh, then it was a big deal, you know. And uh, one of the main figures of Watergate was a man named Charles Colson. He passed away April of 2012, and he was 80 years old. He I can still see his picture from back in those days. He had black horn rim glasses. And he was, he was known as the evil genius of the Nixon administration. He, he worked his way up. He said, go into the White House and has to come be a, a, a counsel to the president. And he worked his way up to where his office was right next door to the president of the United States. Every morning, 8 a.m., briefings with the president, the, the secretary of state, which was Henry Kissinger at the time, and, and all the national security team there, and he would get in on all of that. The, the, Charles Colson once said he'd walk over his own grandmother to get the president elected for a second term. You're talking about a rough, rugged individual. He ended up going to prison for his role in the Watergate-related case, and in prison, he said this. He said, I shudder to think of what I'd been if I had not gone to prison. He said that in 1993. In fact, he said that in response, by the way, to an interview with Mike Wallace of 60 Minutes, who said, now, 20 years later, how do you look back on Watergate? And Charles Colson responded, best thing that ever happened to me. And he looked at him like he was crazy. And he related why that was. He said, 93, he said, lying on the rotten floor of a jail cell, a prison cell. You know it's not prosperity or pleasure that's important, but the maturing of the soul. He talks about a Christian that he knew who was a CEO of a huge corporation. And that, that young man in his 40s and had everything going for him. I mean, he runs a corporation that has like 25,000 employees. And has everything you, you think that... that you, People who are throwing their money at that big lottery, they, he had everything that they think they want to be happy, and he was empty inside. And he, he had, this CEO that Charles Colson knew had gone to New York City, and while he was there for business, he had a night free and he didn't know what to do. And so he looked in the paper for Broadway shows and nothing appealed to him, but he saw the an article in the New York Times that said that Billy Graham was at Madison Square Garden. And he just, he said, I just thought, I'll go hear him. I never heard him. And he walked into Madison Square Garden and he said, I went way up into the third tier of the garden. I'm way up top listening to him preach. He said, but when he gave that invitation to come and receive Christ as your Savior, I, along with hundreds of others, began to make my way down from that way up in the balcony. He said, I walked all the way down to the front of that platform and received Christ as my Savior that night. Well, Charles Cole, Charles Cole rebuffed that. He didn't want anything to do with that. He'd never heard anybody talk about Christ like they really knew Him. And he gave him a witness that night and urged him to trust Christ as Savior, and he didn't do it. But he said this, he said, I went out into my car and I sat in the driveway thinking about what I'd heard. He said, and I began to cry uncontrollably. I could not stop crying. And I cried out to God. 
And here's old Colson's words. He said, I realized for the first time what a sinner I was. And I realized that Christ died on the cross for my sins. And he cried out for Christ to save him. He said, I felt so free, so grateful to God that ever since I'll do anything that God calls me to do. The Boston Globe wrote in 1973, how about this, if Mr. Colson can repent of his sins, there just has to be hope for everyone. That's what they wrote. Colson pleaded guilty in 1974 to obstruction of justice. He ended up serving seven months of a one to three year prison sentence. But he stayed with his faith and he went on to use his efforts to help others. He called going to prison a great blessing. He began a radio, daily radio commentary called Breakpoint. It was heard on more than 1,400 outlets across the United States with some 8 million listeners. His Chuck Colson's famous redemption story and tireless advocacy on behalf of the marginalized and the outcast have called all of us to a deeper reflection on our lives and priorities, Senate leader Mitch McConnell said in a statement. He said he lives on as a modern model of redemption and a permanent rebuttal to the cynical claim that there are no second chances in life. Listen to this. Colson received 15 honorary doctorates. In 1993, he was awarded the Templeton Prize for Progress in Religion, the world's largest annual award, which is a million dollars, given to the person who has made an exceptional contribution to affirming life's spiritual dimension. He donated that prize to further the work of Prison Fellowship, his ministry back to reach prisoners. He lived in Naples, Florida in his latter years, and in 2000, Governor Jeb Bush restored his civil rights, including his right to vote. 25 years after he left prison. In 2008, he was awarded the Presidential Citizens Medal by President George W. Bush. His biographer said in the end, Colson's biggest legacy probably won't be his books or his prison ministry. Listen carefully. He said, I think Chuck Colson's legacy is above all the story of his life. It's a story about a bad man turned good through grace. Only God could have turned a life around like He did Chuck Colson's. And the same can be said of all our lives. The only one that could turn your life around is Jesus Christ. If you've never experienced that, you ought to experience that. You ought, to, you ought to come and ask Christ to change your heart. Change your life. Hey, what's the answer for America? You know what the answer for America is? It's changing people's hearts one person at a time. The answer is still personally giving the gospel to every creature. Giving the gospel to every single person. And inviting them to come to know Christ as their personal Savior. You know what it does? It changes your heart. We have, we have friends. I know that surprises you. But we have friends. Years. Uh, wow. Probably 35 years or so. Um, Bill Longo was a pastor for many years. An evangelist and different things in the Lord's work. And the Lord has our, had our paths to cross when we were very young in the ministry. And Bill's testimony was he was a he was a uh, 60s, long-haired, you know, VW bug uh, van driving, you know, uh, pot-smoking hippie. That's what he was. And uh, he, his goal in life was to build a cabin up in the woods somewhere and be out there just by himself and live away from everybody else and nobody bother me and I won't bother you. That's what he, that's what he was. He was uh, in construction. And he talks about he was at home. He and his wife had just gotten married. They were, they were staying at her parents' home. Her parents went to a Baptist church. Bill and Jerry didn't go to church. He said he, he remembers it was a Thursday night. He said, I, I got home and Jerry and her parents had gone somewhere. And he said, I was excited because there was a John Wayne movie on. 
He liked John Wayne. He said, I had myself a six-pack of beer and a John Wayne movie, and man, I was set for the night. He said, Brother Taylor, he said, I sat down and I turned that thing on, and it was just starting, and all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. Oh, who, you know, who is that? He opens up the door, and it's the pastor of the Baptist church. And he said, Jerry's mom and dad, they're not here. He said, okay. Well, he said, you, you let them know I come by. And Bill went to close the door, and the pastor put his foot in the door. And he looked at me and said, let me, let, let me ask you a question. I said, all right. He said, if you were to die tonight, are you 100% sure that you'd go to heaven? And Bill said, I, no one ever asked me that before. Never, never knew anything about that before. He said, I kind of was upset because this guy was here talking to me and I wanted to watch the John Wayne movie. He said, but I let the guy come in. He said, I don't know why I did, but I did. And that preacher went through the plan of salvation with Bill Longo, and Bill Longo prayed and asked Christ to be his Savior that night. He didn't. And by the way, just so you know, he didn't know everything that took place. When his wife got home that night, he said, he told her, uh, she said, well, how was your night? He said, well, I missed some of the movie. He said, a preacher from the church came by, and I prayed with him. That's all he told her. He said, I told him I'd go to church Sunday. So they went to church Sunday. When the invitation was given, he had told the preacher he'd come forward. So he looked at Jerry and he said, I'm going forward. So she went forward with him. And someone led her to Christ during the invitation. And they both got saved. And, and, and he says, now, he said, I, he said, nobody had taught me anything or anything like that. He said, but I'm, I'm driving to work. He said, I got off work. On Monday, it's hot. He said, and I stop like I usually do, and I buy me a, a big bottle of beer. Set it right there and beside my, where I'm driving, right, right there. He said, I can see the sweat rolling off it. He said, and all of a sudden, I'm looking at it thinking, I shouldn't drink that anymore. He said, nobody had ever preached a sermon to me about alcohol or anything. I said, I shouldn't drink that anymore. He said, and I'm listening to the music and all of a sudden, they're saying stuff, and I'm listening to what they're saying and saying, man, that's not right. What they're talking about, that's not what I should listen to. I was only being to shut the radio off. He said, wait a minute. Nobody pulled him aside and said, hey, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't listen to that. You shouldn't do that. No, no, no. Hey, what happened? Christ came in his heart, and his desires changed. And all of a sudden, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to like, I don't care for those anymore. The place I used to go, I don't go there anymore. There's been a great change since I've been born again. There's been a change in your life since you've been born again. I'm fearful that there's a whole lot of folks who say they're on their way to heaven that aren't going to go there. If only, listen, if the only thing you have to hang your hat on, you listen to me, the only thing you have to hang your hat on is that you prayed a prayer one time. You don't have anything to hang your hat on. You, you ought to see some evidence of spiritual life in your life. I'm not saying you can't backslide. We've been saved, those of you who have been saved in a long time, you know you can't. But you know you're miserable when you are. You know you're not enjoying it. Doesn't mean once you're saved, it doesn't mean you won't sin, but you won't enjoy sin anymore. Those days are over. But let's have a change of heart. I think what's hurting America is listen, it's not, it isn't just Muslim, it isn't just uh, the lost, it isn't just the degenerate. It's God's people. It's, it's people who profess to know God, but deny the power thereof. There's no change in our life. There's no difference. I think we need to make sure that our salvation's a heart matter. And that they're, they're truly, that we've truly been born again. And that we know Christ is our Savior. If you've never had Christ change your heart, receive Him today. He's here. He'll save you. He'll change your heart. 
if you ask him to. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth now this morning. Thank you, Lord, for being a God that can change us from the inside out. Give us different desires and change us. That old things are passed away and all things become new. There's been a great change since I've been born again. And I pray, Lord, that today, if any in this room has never had a new heart, realize that a wonderful change has never taken place in their life because Christ has never really come into their heart. I pray that they'd understand that salvation is believing in their heart. And I pray they'd trust Christ from their heart today. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. I wonder how many folks here this morning could say, Preacher, I know for sure that when I die I'll go to heaven. Not only have I trusted Jesus as my Savior, I know the change in my heart that's been wrought because Jesus has come into my heart. I know the desires, and I know that those aren't the desires of an unsaved heart, of a heart that's not been changed by Christ. I know that. And I know that I'm saved. I know I'm born again. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip it up that I may see it? God bless you. Amen. You may put them down. If you're here today and would say, Pastor, I, I walked an aisle one time or I prayed with somebody one time and I, I asked Jesus to save me or my mom told me I did sometime when I was little. But you know what? There's no change in me. In fact, I rather enjoy the things that I know as a Christian I ought not to enjoy. I don't look forward to church. I look forward to church being over. Wide awake to the things of the world, but kind of dull to the things of God. I wonder if you're here today and God is speaking to your heart. You say, what will people say? Hey, you know what? People will rejoice that you are settling the matter of your eternity. I'd rather see you settle it here than see you be cast into hell one day at the judgment seat, at the great white throne judgment because Jesus saying, depart from me, I never knew you. I wonder if you're here today and just say, Pastor, I, God's dealing with my heart this morning about my salvation. I believe I need a new heart. Please pray for me. Would you slip your hand up and put it back down and I'll pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Appreciate your honesty. Anybody else? Say, Pastor, pray for me. Not embarrass you, not come to you, but I will pray for you. Pray for you to do what God wants. Listen, folks, if, if we don't live like Christians, we're not part of the solution. We're part of the problem. I think that's why Jesus said, or the, the Lord said in the book of Peter, when judgment begins, it'll begin at the house of God. It lies at our feet. That we live. Allow Christ to live through us. Be Christians. Heavenly Father, I thank you for speaking to hearts this morning. I thank you, Lord, for these who've been honest and have slipped their hand up. I pray you'd help them and encourage them to settle the matter once and for all and to know that they're born again. Give them new desires in their heart that old things will pass away and all things will become new. And then, Lord, help those of us in this room to, to not fall in step with the world and bemoan that we need less laws or we need more guns or we need better education or we need more this or more that. May we understand and may we send out the message that what is needed is a new heart and only God can give you a new heart. Only God can make the lasting change that's needed. In America, until they come back to God, will never come back to good. So Lord, help us to be the light to this world and the salt to this earth. May others see Christ in our life. And may we point them to the Savior.
the only one who can change them permanently. Help us to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Have your way now in this invitation. May each individual do what you're bidding them to do in their heart. Lord, I pray for those who are saved and never been baptized that they'd come and say, I need to be baptized. I want to obey the Lord. If they're saved and they're baptized and they believe this is where they ought to belong, may they come and say, I want to belong to Bible Baptist Church and serve the Lord here. Christians just want to come and pray for their loved ones, pray for their country. Pray you'd bless them and hear their prayer this morning. May your will be done in this invitation, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing. God has spoken to your heart today. Respond to him this morning. Will you please? Search me, O God. You want to settle the matter of salvation, you come. You want to be baptized, you come. You need this where you ought to belong, you come. You just want to come and pray. Come and pray this morning. That's right. Know my thoughts, I pray. Some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. I praise the Lord for cleansing me from sin. Father in heaven, we bow before you in prayer this morning. I thank you, Lord, for your word, and I thank you, God, for a great salvation that you provide to us. Oh, my heart is burdened that God's people live like God's people, that we be the conscience of our country once again, that churches across this land would proclaim your truth, not to just have an outward show, but that we would serve you from the heart. Lord, I pray that from the core of our being, we would love you. Lord, that others would see Christ in us and the way we live and the way we conduct our life, the issues of our life would be of God. Use us to impact our community, to impact our world right here for Jesus Christ. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for a great salvation you provided for us. Help us to tell others. Help us to preach the gospel to every creature. Do what we can do to win people one by one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. By the way, I didn't tell you about, you know, one thing it did to Brother Longo um, changed his politics. He, he, he thought... Marijuana ought to be legalized till he got born again. Then he voted against it. Doesn't think that wasn't right. Thought it was okay to gamble and play the lottery till he became born again. And by the way, if it's wrong to play when it's at a hundred dollars or a million dollars, it's wrong to play when it's at nine hundred million. You know, don't 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 put a price on your principles.
Don't put a price on your standards and on your convictions, okay? doesn't matter. Um, my father owns more than all that anyway. Amen? And uh, let's, let's reckon ourselves indeed to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God. Oh, I want that. I want to be alive to the things of God, don't you? I want to be, as, as, you know, as I watched that football game last night between the Bungles and the Steelers, and they really are the Bungles after last night. But you know, as, as rabid and as excited as those fans were into that game, are we that devoted, pouring down rain and snow and all kinds of stuff? They're out there going crazy for their team. Some of them crying when it's over. Huh? And yet there's the, some of those same people would look out today and say, oh, it's snowing, can't go to church. You know? Where's our devotion for the things of God? I want to be alive like that under the things of God. That's what I want to have. Let's be seated for a minute. We want to take an offering this morning for the Whartons. So, fellows, if you'll come, Pete has the plates there for you. Just come when you're ready, guys. We'll pray and we'll ask God to use this to be a real blessing and encouragement to the family, all right? Father, we thank you now for the opportunity we have to give to this family who's Come up with this need. Lord, you know all about it. Yes. And Lord, you know the reason behind this fire and what you want to, how you want to use it in the life of David and Marlene and the family. Lord, I pray that you would reveal to them exactly what your will is and what steps you would have them to take. We just desire to let them know that we love them and we care about them and we appreciate their testimony. And Lord, we would like to just be an encouragement. And so take the gifts we give today and tonight. May it be a real blessing to this family as they receive them. May, may it be used to meet any need that they have and maybe even some wants. And I pray to be a great encouragement and comfort to them as we show our love to them in their time of need. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for giving to them. Uh, pray for Miss Slayball. She's homesick today. Don't know where she got that from, but uh, <laughs> but I feel good. Uh, <laughs> tad guilty, but good. And uh, she's uh, pray for her. She'll be able to lick this thing. She'll be back with us soon. All right, all right. Let's stand together, shall we? Father, dismiss us now with your care. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful morning together. Lord, give everyone safety as we travel. Help us to be careful on the roads. And Lord, give us a good afternoon and prepare our hearts for what you have for us this evening and bring us back safely tonight. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain cleansed by his blood joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this side for I'm a part of the family the family of God Amen, you're dismissed, we'll see you tonight <laughs>